video, I'm going to show you how you can use the power of AI inside your Google Sheet. So first thing first, we need to install the application called Sheet AI. Just visit sheetai.app by entering your email over here and click on install add-on. Once you do that, you will be redirected to the installation page on Google Workspace. Over there, what we need to do is, we need to click on this install button, click on continue. It will show us this pop-up and uh, over here, we will just select our account. If it's not visible, don't worry, it's just a Google pop-up which pops up to select your email ID and we can select our email ID. It will ask for two different permissions. The first permission basically allows us to send the prompt and get the response back and the second permission allows us to show that sidebar which we show. I'll click on allow. Once done, it will show this that the first step is done. The second step is the installation part, uh, which is basically the setup where I will put this tutorial video. So we're not going to click on that. I'm going to go back to my Google Sheet and I'll reload this. I have prepared a Google Sheet for you with four different sheet um, explaining different use cases which can be done with Sheet AI application. I also have some prompts ready so I don't have to spend time writing new new ones. So let's see how and what we are going to do. So the, for the first sheet, we have data sanitization. What does data sanitization means? Data sanitization means we have a cluttered data and we want to get some particular specific information out of it. Now, so the first thing which we are going to do is we are going to get the state abbreviation, which basically means we want to get the state name in just two words. So I'm going to write it like this. So we first write equals to sheet AI because it's in function. Before we continue, let me delete that. Before we continue, when you install sheet AI for the first time to use it for the first time, make sure to launch the app first. Because once you will launch the app, you'll be able to see your credential and your account will be created. Until and unless you launch the app, it will the, your account will not be created. And if you try to run sheet AI function, it will show error. So as you can see, I have this particular amount of credits left and I'm going to close once I see that. Then now I can use my prompts. So this is not prompt or like I did some engineering or something. It's very simple. All I did was I mentioned to the AI that this is the full address and I then I told this is what the full address is and then I asked what state is the address in and then I mentioned how exactly I want that address to be represented. So like I answered answer with two character state abbreviation. Then this next parameter is the user email. User email stands for your email. The email actually the Gmail account by which you have installed. So this is the Gmail account which I'm using. So that's why I'm using, I'm going to enter this particular email. So I'm going to update this. Okay, once done, all I need to do is hit enter. And you can see it's done. Similarly, we can do that for the zip codes. I'm going to update the email over here. And if I enter this, same thing, you can see, uh, sorry, not this, oh, sorry. Over here, we are pro uh, providing that this is the full address. What is full address? This is the full address. What is the zip code of the address? So then we mentioned, okay, what do we want? Then we said, okay, answer with numeric ca characters only. You see this uh, double, like, this is basically, uh, so the AI can understand, like, what comes next, right? So that's why we specified, like, these two dots as well. So when I, hit, when I will hit enter, it will return the zip code. Then I can just... Uh, select both of them and copy that formula for all of the others. So basically what happened will A1, uh, this A2, which was over here, will be uh, converted into A3 and so on and so forth. And you can see all of them are generated, right? Now I'll go to the thank you card. So thank you card is basically like, let's say you have some people name and you have some specific things to mention. This can be quite useful for, um, I, as you might have heard, like there are many people who, what they do is they, get the information from LinkedIn and you're trying to reach out. This can be for different use cases. Let's say you wanted to reach out to new profiles. Uh, you have some products which you want to market or let's say you just, you are a, a new graduate or someone or you're looking for a job. You, you're interacting with a lot of people and you want to send them personalized emails or messages. So this is an example of that. So let's see how the prompt of this one will go. Let me first update the email and then I'll copy this prompt. I'll go over here and paste the prompt over here. So you can see, I just call the function. Function uh, uh, accepts prompt, user email, maximum words. You can also provide how much maximum words you want this to use because the uh, the pricing is based on words. So we want to make sure okay, if you want to limit the words usage, you can limit that according to your requirements. Now for right now, I'm going to keep it clean so that we can see how 
creative it can get we also have this creativity thing so basically if you want so what happens is some tasks are very specific to the point answer like for example the previous one which we did that okay this is the state pin code there is no creativity in that right on the other hand for something like email we want it to be more creative we want it to think more of like different stuff so in that case what we can do is we can actually provide this um so for now i'm going to just go ahead but creativity by default is 0.4 and you can increase that up to like 0 0.5 0 0.6 0 0.7 and you can even set it to 1 to be like maximum creativity we also have model so model is basically you can see over here we have different model but default we are using text davinci which is the top and the best model available for ai so yeah without any further ado i'm going to just enter and let's see how it does so you can see this is the particular email response given by it so we asked the ai to mention they danced really well and carried the cake into the hall we want to thank you so much for attending our wedding so now where is this coming from let me go back to the prompt it was we are writing a thank you card okay so we first of all mentioned to the ai that what we are doing we are writing a thank you card then you mentioned that for uh, to this particular person to this particular addressee right then we said for attending our wedding so they particular uh, they attended the wedding of us and then like we are writing it like that so please write six to seven sentences we have even specified that we, how much we want so we said six to seven sentences for the card addressed to them be sure to mention then we also specified some things which we want to mention for that particular person and then we provided that by mentioning b2 cell so let's see if it did any good or bad job we want to thank you so much for attending our wedding it means the world to us we have celebrated so this is like how it will go like if you are writing a wedding uh, thank you card then there is this we especially appreciate you taking the time to dance with us this was they danced really well and carried uh, the cake and carried the cake into the hall your presence was a joy your enthusiasm was contagious we are so grateful for your friendship and support thanks again for and we are together for looking forward to other self okay let's see for the second one so for the second one it's mr kellogg and he drove us home he has a vacation coming up in Jan okay so let's see how well the ai writes for this one so mr kellogg you wanted to take a moment to thank you for attending okay your presence meant so much to us we are grateful yeah we also want to thank you for driving us home after the reception so basically uh, if you go back over here you can see thanks for attending our wedding right from there it's getting that okay, okay this was that then it was such a re re uh, relief to have that taken care of we hope you have a wonderful time in your upcoming vacation so we also mentioned that okay let's do the same for the next one they got us flowers a card and a donation to the charity okay so let's see how this goes but basically i think you get the point right how it is working so i don't want to spend much more time on this and let's move forward to the next one so again we are using the sheet ai but this time what we are trying to do is we are trying to get this pointed like this is a, a large sum of text and it's a bit hard to read so what i wanted to do is i want to convert this into a bullet, bullet points which are more easier to read so i'm going to just paste it like this what i'm saying is product review is this what are the main takeaways from the product review in bullet point points main takeaways dot again you see this like kind of once you see these different prompts i think you can realize the kind of structure we, that is going on we say okay, okay this two dots is this this what it will be like the question mark which is where we end this uh, this particular prompt which i'm saying and that's when the ai can understand okay, okay what will go here and it will fill that okay i need to update this email let me quickly do that and i'll hit enter please make sure to provide the exact same email id you are using the app at the moment this particular gmail id let's give it a second and here it is so received as a birthday gift from sister I received this as a birthday gift from my sister from a couple days ago. So you can understand that what AI tried to do is understand what is important and what's not too important. So for example, 
uh, we are writing the summary for the product review, right? So what is it, what is it about? It's about the product. So how many days you received it? It's not too much. Like so, that's how I am understanding it. But basically, I think this is how. So this is basically what the AI come up with. Larger than the other Kindle. So let's see. It is larger than the other Kindles that I am used to. Ordered a clean clear case with pop socket for easy holding. Okay, for back will pop socket. So you can see it's done. So I can just scroll it past like this, and it will be done for both of these as well. Let's give it a second. You can see it's very pleased with the uh, user is very pleased with the project. User is able to conveniently carry the device to read. So happy I decided I love to carry it conveniently. User moms also love the Kindle. My moms also felt the same way I did with the physical books. Okay, so basically you see it's it's done. Now this last is actually an interesting one. So first three what we saw was directly using a sheet AI function in which we provided one question and we asked what's the answer directly like that. In this last one what we are going to do is actually use another function which is called sheet AI range. The, the difference between sheet AI and sheet AI range is if you click on that you can see it accepts an example input and it accepts example output. Then we provide the input and then the AI will guess the output. Let's see how it works. So first, let me get rid of all of this. I'm going to provide this as an example input and I'll pro then I'll write comma, then I'll choose this as an example output. So this is the question, this is the answer. This is the question, this is the answer. Now, the question is this. Do you get how the range, uh, sheet AI range works? We provided the example questions, example answers, exactly. Make sure these are like uh, yeah, correct array. So like I couldn't figure out how to copy paste is the question for features. And then we entered the question in the end. So I'll hit enter and let's give it a second. So broken on MacBook Pro, it's compatibility. Let me do it for all of them and let's see how well the AI performs. So it says it wish it was cheaper. So this is something related to pricing. Being able to download code will be useful. So that is a new feature request. So for example, if you have a lot of uh, product feedback, you can easily short sort them out and send the feature request to the developers, send the pricing request to the marketing team or send the usability and stuff like that. You got the point. And let's see how it done. Can it grow out of the how to use usability. It doesn't support dark mode features. N not sure. So one thing which is important to understand, AI even works with wrong text. So this nint sub sure what to do with, uh, with the button. So it's it's written H U W T T T O N. This is totally wrongly uh, spelled. But still, AI was able to understand that the usability issue is there. See. Uh, tried to submit but didn't work so that's the functionality so that's all how sheet ai works how sheet ai range app works if you have any feedback any question please send us an email at support at the rate sheet ai dot app we are looking forward to your experience and i hope you have a great time